So there is countless plugins to do color previews within Vim, and today I'm going to show you the one that I'm using, which is Vim Hexokinase. Now, it claims to be the fastest of the plugins, but you know what? So do all of them, so I can't really tell you whether that's true or not. All I can tell you is that I like this version, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do, and let's jump right into it. So before I get into the GitHub page of Vim Hexokinase, I want to talk about what I was previously using. So the first time that I started using color previews within Vim, I was using NVim Colorizer. Now, that one's pretty good. The problem is it's a little slow from time to time. I'm not really sure whether that's just something to do with my setup or what was going on there, but I noticed that on larger code bases, NVim Colorizer or Colorizer NVim, whatever it was called, it was a little slow from time to time. Then I moved over to COC Highlight just because I was using COC and I was just like, you know what? Let's just download this and just use it because that's what's in this current setup that I'm with. And then I decided to move from that because what if I decide to move away from COC at some point? Now, that's probably not going to happen anytime soon because there's not really a better way to do code completion within Vim. But let's just assume that one day I do move away from COC. Why don't I move to another plugin that doesn't have ties to COC? And that is where Vim Hexokinase comes in. So let's have a look at the actual GitHub page. So starting from the top, we've got the formats for the colors that actually supports. Now this isn't anything too impressive, but I guess I should probably list them out. So you've got the full hex RGB string. You've got the shortened down version, which is only three characters. You've got RGB functions. RGBA functions, HSL functions, HSLA functions, and also web colors. And I didn't realize you could set custom patterns, but I guess somewhere in the configs, you can probably set up a custom setup to do colors. So if you want to do a color format that isn't supported, then I guess you can set that up through that. I'll see if I can find that before the end of the video. Now, where it gets interesting is the way that it actually does color previews. So the default for NeoVim is to use virtual. So virtual will use a function that NeoVim has, which is to do little floating text boxes, basically, or floating, I guess, bo boxes of text is probably the, be the best way to describe it. Now, I don't believe BaseVim supports this. There might be a version of it that does, but from the best of my knowledge, it doesn't. So you're gonna have to use NeoVim for this specific function, but for the rest, you can use NeoVim or you can use BaseVim. I think GVim comes with the NeoVim stuff as well, but I'm not sure. I haven't actually used GVim myself. Now, the next one we have is Sign Column. So Sign Column will actually put the preview in the, I guess, the column along the side on, on this side for you guys, but it's backwards for me anyway. So that'll put it in the actual column. Now, I'm not a big fan of this because what it does is actually stretches out the column when you have multiple colors on one line. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment on my system, but let's keep going through them. So next up, we have foreground, which will do a very little preview. I'm not a big fan of this one. So for the hex values, it only colors the hash. For the color names, it'll actually color the name, which is, that doesn't look too bad. And then for the RGB and HSL, it'll just color the brackets. I don't think that one's exactly clear enough to really use, so I'm not a big fan of that one either. Now, foreground full is a bit better. So foreground full will just change the whole foreground color. I might switch to this one from what I'm currently using, but let's keep going. So the reason this plugin exists is because of these two versions of Colorizer. These are apparently two different ones. I don't think, you know, neither of these are the ones that I've tried before. I tried something different, but the way that they display the color is, I believe, only in background full, and the developer of this doesn't particularly like that. As I was saying before, I like this version myself, so that rationale doesn't really make sense to me, but apparently they also load the colors in synchronously, whereas this does it asynchronously. I don't think I've really worked on the code base big enough for it to really be a problem. I think NVim Colorizer was just written poorly. But now that we've got all that out of the way, let's just get over to looking at how this plugin works. Now, I'll move this over to a second screen, and we've got this nice setup right here. So as I was saying before, we have coloring for the color names. So you can do like red, blue, green, cyan, white, those sorts of colors. You can chuck like purple on here, various other stuff. Okay, then you've got the short hex values. So hash and then the red, green, and blue color. Then you've got the full hex values. So red, red, green, green, blue, blue. You've also got support for RGB with the numbers or RGB with percentages. Same with HSL. I can't remember what HSL stands for. Hue saturation, is it, is it hue saturation lightness? That sounds right. If someone remembers exactly what that is, let me know. And you've also got the alpha versions of all of those. So RGB alpha with colors, with percentages, and also HSLA. 
So before we get to configuring the plugin, let's actually look at how to install it. So if we go over to the GitHub again, what we're gonna do if we're using Vimplug is copy this line right in here. So don't just write in the name of the repo and also the author. You're also gonna have to do this as well. So you have to pass in some arguments to it. I'm not exactly sure why it's set up like this, but just copy in what it says to do or customize it exactly for what you need for your plugin manager. So I'm just using Vimplug. So if we go to that on my VimRC, if we come down here in my Vimplug block, I've just copied that in right here. So nothing too special there. So the next thing you're going to want to do is enable term GUI colors. Now this is going to very much depend on which terminal you're using. So one thing I didn't mention before is that you need a terminal that supports true colors. Now, not all terminals support this. If you're using something like your XVT, then you're not going to be able to use that. I know off the top of my head that Kitty and ST do support it. Now you can find a list online of terminals that support true color, but make sure you have one that actually does. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is if you're using a version of base Vim, you're going to want to make sure you have term GUI colors installed. So try setting term GUI colors. If all your colors die, then that's an indication that you don't have a version of Vim that does support it. I believe the version in the Arch repos doesn't support it. So in that case, just use NeoVim or compile Vim yourself with the features actually enabled. I'm not sure how to do that, but I'm sure there are tutorials online somewhere about how to do that. So if you have a terminal that does support term GUI colors, just make sure you enable this by running set term GUI colors or in your Vim RC, just add this in. So set term GUI colors without the colon. Now, once you've done all that, you're gonna be able to use this plugin. So there's a couple of things you can actually configure. There's not a ton that really matters, but some of the stuff you might wanna do. So I think by default, the only time the colors actually update is when you save. So you can actually change the refresh event. I would recommend changing it to insert leave. I believe you can also add text changed as was in the example up here. So whenever the text actually changed, it actually updated the colors. I haven't gotten this to work though. So I'm not really sure what the reason why that's not working is, but if it works in your system to add text changed into this list, so that would be something like this. So presuming that actually works in your system, what should happen is if we reload this up, as soon as you actually change one of these, it should start regenerating the colors. As I was saying before, this doesn't work on my system. I'm not really sure why, but I still think it's an improvement over just doing it when the file is saved. So I'm just gonna keep it like this. So the other thing you can do is change the patterns to work on. So if you don't wanna support every single pattern that's here, you can disable some. So say if you don't wanna support color names or HSLA, you can remove these from this list. I believe by default, it supports everything. So I didn't actually need this list here at all, but for some reason I copied it in. Anyway, the next thing that's gonna be important to you is actually changing the highlighter. So as I was saying before, there's a couple of different ones. And so let's actually go through them. So you don't actually just have to use one. You can use all of them at once if you want, but we're gonna do them one by one. So if we do virtual, save this, bring this back up. Now it's just got a thing on the end of the line. I'm not a big fan of this, especially for hex values because hex values are also treated like comments. So they're colored green and then you got a bit of a color at the end of the line. Not a big fan of that. But let's switch it to another one. So we've got a sign column. So sign underscore column. Now this is actually interesting. I hadn't tested this before, but it seems like it's not gonna show all of the colors. Now, I don't know why. That might be a NeoVim problem. I'm not really sure about that. That's actually interesting. So sign column actually doesn't even work on my system right now. That's interesting. I might have to submit a bug report about that, but yeah, anyway, let's have a look at the next one. So next up we have foreground. So foreground isn't, it's not a terrible looking one, but let's have a look at that. So foreground, as I was saying before, just colors the foreground. So for the colors, it'll color the actual color name. This is another problem with just using foreground. So it just colors the hash symbol. So next to the hash symbol, it's then got the rest of the comment color. Not a big fan of that. So foreground full probably looks a little bit better. And if we go foreground full like this, so no underscore, even though sign column has an underscore, I feel like that's a bit of a weird decision to make. You should either use the underscores or don't use the underscores. I know I'm a terrible person to say that if you've looked at some of my code bases, but anyway, I think, actually no, I might be the best person to say it because I know how terrible it looks. <laughs> So this is what foreground full looks like. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this because for the dark colors, it gets very difficult to read. And if you use the light theme, it'll then be the same for the light colors. So I'm a bit more of a fan of background or background full at least. So if we just switch over to that one, but the problem with just regular background is this has the same problem that the 
uh, foreground had. So we'll see what that looks like in just a moment. So as we can see, this will actually color the background text. So for the regular color names, this will color the whole thing. For the hex values, it only colors the hash symbol. So as I was saying before, this has the problem where it shows the comment color after the color of the actual string. Not a big fan of that, as I was saying before. But so let's just switch back over to background full and see what that looks like again. And we go over here. And as we can see, personally, I think this one looks the best because the problem, as I was saying before, with the dark colors isn't really here. If the color's too dark, then you know that it looks very similar to your terminal background color, and it still makes the text very easy to read. So I was saying before that you can actually combine these. So this is just a list. So if we want to do virtual as well as background full, we can do that. There's nothing stopping us. So bring this file back up. And as we can see, that broke. Okay, that one's new. I haven't seen that before. So maybe you can't do them all together. Or maybe that's just something that's breaking on my system. So I guess ignore the fact that I said you could actually use them together. I guess you can't, or at least I guess you can't with something that's going on with my system. So if you basically want this always enabled, I would recommend running this line here. So auto command vim enter star and then hexokina says turn on. So this will basically turn the plugin on for every single file type. But if you only want it turned on for certain file types, you can use an auto command for this or you can use the function that's actually built into vim hexokina say. So this right here, I'll copy this over. So it's just g colon hexokina say underscore ft enabled. As I was saying though, you can just use an auto command to do this. You don't have to use this array. I would recommend just using the auto command just to keep it a bit more in line with the way you do vim stuff. And the other thing you can configure is this right here. So if you only want certain color types enabled for certain file types, so say in CSS you only want, I don't know, color names and you only want full hex, then we can just get rid of all of this here. And then if we opened up a CSS file, all we'd get coloring for is full hex and color names. Now, I was saying before that I don't really care about that, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. But if you only want certain color types in certain files, maybe you wanna do that. Maybe you want to enforce a certain way to do colors and you wanna make it so if you do it in a different way, then you're not gonna get a color preview. That might be a reason why you use that. So this isn't every single thing you can configure with Hexokina say. If you wanna look at the rest, just bring up the Vim help menu. So we go colon H and start running Hexokina say. As we will see, there's a bunch of other stuff you can configure in here as well. So have a read through this for anything else you wanna do. So for most things though, this will pretty much cover everything you wanna do. If you wanna have a bit more of an in-depth look in it though, go have a look in the help menu. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video. So if you liked this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. If you wanna see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. If you notice again that it's actually dark out there, it isn't actually nighttime this time. I've just got the window closed because it's going dark and I didn't want the lighting to break during the middle of the video. So hopefully the lighting isn't terrible. It doesn't look great on my recording, but it should be passable. So I'm not really sure. But anyway, up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you wanna see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links. So that'll be like my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that sort of stuff. So if you wanna chat with me or you wanna get video updates, then go check that out. Also down below, I've got my support link. So if you wanna to donate to the channel, then I've got my Patreon and various other methods down below. So feel free to check any of those out. But obviously, as always, if you don't wanna support the channel, then you don't have to whatsoever. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform. So my BitTube and my library. So feel free to check those out if you wanna see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.